Up with Crim begins now. It is 730 now, right now on Up with Crim. Pullman police are answering questions about a 2019 death investigation of a Washington State University freshman. The logistics of trying to set up in-person interviews with all the witnesses who uh, many were not in Pullman. All right now, why they say it took so long to recommend charges. Plus this morning we are hearing from LGBT activists in Idaho about the new equality bill passed by the House of Representatives. And soon Coeur d'Alene Public Schools will welcome back all students to in-person learning. This morning, more on the decision behind the move. And we're taking you outside following yesterday's snow. Where is it? Well, I'll let you know what that means for our upcoming forecast. What do you think of all this weather? <laughs> do you have any <coughs> comments? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Up With Krem. So these are the big cats out at Cattails, and they have something to say about the weather. They were interviewed this week asking how they really feel about all that snow. All right, I went to the video. Let it play. Let it play. Can we let it play? Coming up is a Bengal tiger. A full, no wait, no, That's Siberian, cool. sorry. Siberian tiger. That's what I meant. The Bengal was the first one. This one's Siberian. You can tell by the white on it, and oh, is that a cool animal or what? That exists in the wild. It's a beautiful animal. I just want to touch it, right? Oh, you know, and the Cattails, of course, is a nonprofit. If you haven't been there in the North Spokane area, uh, taking care of a lot of abandoned animals or animals that are in homes that shouldn't be. Yeah. Uh, so it's good to see that they're taking care of those cats. Yeah, giving them a new life, because as we saw uh, during the pandemic with a certain uh, docu-series, if you will, uh, some people might get those and shouldn't have them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they should not. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to look up uh, some of their rescues, I know they're, they're taking in rescues, you know, I feel like every year or so. So, yeah, check them out and see if there's any way that you can help at home. Ah, that'd be awesome. That's something to do. And, uh, well, something else you can do is maybe get outside. We've got a perfect forecast for that. Today, it's a little bit cloudy as we kick things off, and temperatures are hovering right around freezing early on this morning. We're sitting comfortably at 32 degrees here in town under mostly cloudy skies. We've got wind finally dying down. That starts here in Spokane and then eventually starts dying down elsewhere in the state. But temperatures are hovering in the 30s early on today, and that means a little bit of refreezing of some of what melted during the day yesterday. By the time we get into about 10 to noon, wind dies down and basically becomes negligible. As we get into the afternoon, you'll see a little more wind, but really not much and not near what we saw yesterday. Our wind advisory is still in place for central parts of Washington and southern parts of Washington and the Palouse. That's for wind gusts up to about 45 miles per hour. You head into the mountains and it's snow. Two to four inches in the valleys, even more up in some of those higher elevations. Talking six to eight inches of snow for those of you trying to ski or ride. Look out. Oof, going to be nice. Today, temps climb into the low 40s. So those little lightning bolts and raindrops. Here's how this one plays out. We've got those big lapse rates again. Remember the ones that brought us some of those rumbles of thunder earlier this week? That is around and with a little bit of moisture here, all you need is something to kick that off. And so you get kind of bands of storms. Whether one of those sets up over the top of us or not is the question. If it does, we could see rain and maybe hear thunder. If it doesn't, eh, then it's just going to be sun and a few clouds. All right, Jeremy, thank you. Coming up now, 734. Well, this morning, Spokane police say a driver is recovering after slamming their car into a South Hill home. It happened around 3.30 a.m. near 16th and Wall, and police say the driver suffered a leg injury. The police also added that no one in the home was injured. Let's take a listen to what the homeowners had to say. The extraction was done by the fire department, and um, it was actually nice for us. Maeve just retired from the fire department, so so it was a very friendly crew that were uh, excited yeah, to so help. It was a, big re a reunion of sorts. <laughs> yeah. and so, right uh, now, no charges have been filed, but police say this crash is still under investigation. Well, happening right now, a Food and Drug Administration committee is meeting this morning to discuss emergency use authorization for Johnson & Johnson's coronavirus vaccine. 
Let's take a live look at that meeting right now. This could be a groundbreaking day for COVID vaccines. FDA advisors are meeting to discuss the first single dose Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Now, if the panel gives its recommendation, the FDA could grant emergency use authorization by this weekend. Johnson and Johnson would become the nation's third vaccine following Pfizer and Moderna. An FDA report confirmed the vaccine is 66% effective in preventing COVID symptoms entirely, but 85% effective at preventing severe illness. I'm keeping a close eye on this meeting and we'll let you know what happens. 735 now as we get more information this morning on why it took the Pullman Police Department more than a year to gather charging recommendations in a student's death. Now, police say Sam Martinez died in 2019 of alcohol poisoning after a party at Alpha Tau Omega. Pullman police suggested hazing charges against two members of the fraternity. However, hazing cannot be prosecuted due to the statute of limitations. Investigators say five men should face charges for providing alcohol to a minor. They add there was insufficient evidence to bring about manslaughter charges. And we took this question to leaders on why it took more than one year to recommend these charges. The logistics of trying to set up in-person interviews with all the witnesses who uh, many were not in Pullman when we were trying to interview them um, really added to the timeline of completing this investigation. Now a lawyer for the uh, Martinez family provided us with a statement yesterday about the charging recommendations. That statement reads in part, quote, it is with great sorrow and disappointment for the Martinez family to hear the news that the investigation was not completed in time to bring forward all of the potential criminal charges against the individuals who played a role in the hazing death of their beloved son and brother, Sam Martinez. This has been an unbearable, overwhelmingly painful experience for the Martinez family. However, they remain resolute. We're just getting started here on Up With Creme. The Pullman Arts Commission has to start from square one to get a mural up in downtown Pullman. Uh, what they have done is uh, not very decent. After the break, what one of the artists has to say about the ordeal. And we're taking you outside, letting you know what to expect as we all get ready for the weekend. And the good news, well, it's going to be dry and warm.